G'day, guys. What keeps you warm? A lot of people have talked about, but what can you actually include in your diet to keep you warm? Very interesting. Let's take a look at the traditional people. What have they used to, to keep them warm? I wonder what. Mm. Let's just share the screen. So we're looking at the obviously Inuit populations that live in very cold climates. Uh, this population lives in Canada. This was back in the 90s, this study. And they actually noticed that these traditional people here primarily consumed fish and, and shellfish, then birds, then sea mammals. So remember birds, keep that in mind. Then sea mammals, then some berries, that, that would be seasonal. Remember, these people are not living on the ice. They're living on um, in Canada. So they do have access to seasonal fruit, um, land and animals um, being the least you could see of their foods. Now, so this is this is in Canada. Now, this is a study out of Denmark, so Greenland. So this is slightly in a much colder environment compared. They're actually looking at different age groups as well. Unfortunately, if you take a look, the young people are eating far too much junk food, unfortunately. Um, then when we look at these later ages, what we do what we do see is obviously the process stuff being very low. These, you know, and but also the actual probably you know when it comes to seal meat, blubber, and all that, at most fifty grams, at you know slightly less down here. But look at the oldies. You know, fish is there, or seafood, that's what they mean. Seafood is the highest source of their diet. And so, what do we find in fish? So I'll just put this up. So one thing we do find is taurine content. So when you're looking at like, you know, beef, it's about 40 um, uh, milligrams per 100, can be higher. Lamb is a bit higher. It depends on the cut of lamb. There's some, that's a leg of lamb. But if you look at some other um, parts of lamb, that can be quite high up into the 300 mark. So there it is much higher. And the same thing with um, pork, um, loins, yep, chops and other things can actually be higher. Chicken legs are a bit lower, but breasts are much higher. They come into the 300 mark. Milk, uh, obviously, it, we are talking about milk here. Um, it usually is a bit higher, the mother's milk content. And so if you're looking at something like 900 meals that a, that a baby between one and six months would consume, at an average weight around the, you know, slightly less or close to um, three kilograms, the child is very much getting about a uh, few times that 20, um, you want to nine times, 160 or divide that by the average sort of weight of 70 kilos by three at the maximum, um, then we're definitely looking at nearly four grams per per kilo of uh, nearly four grams for the um, of equivalent for somebody who would be seventy kilos. So you know it's not 
anything to sneeze at. It's quite quite a significant amount of taurine, uh, four grams for you know the average adult equivalent is what a a baby would probably intake. But it, that's just a a bit of a a teaser on the side. But the key thing is look at fish. All these fish, yellow sea brim, quite high mackerel, all this. But when you look at the sea and um, shellfish and other things like that, like oysters, you know, just ginormous in that regard. There are some oysters that get up to, t for the 100 grams, they get up to 2.2 grams. Depends on the oyster. You know, clams, quite high. Mussels are very high as well. Um, scallops, very high. Um, octopus, quite high. Korean prawns, cattlefish, generally speaking, when we look at octopus, prawns, shrimp, tuna, it's quite high, sole, carp, crabs are pretty good as well. Uh, muscle meats are much better than, um, than liver, the beef on the beef side. It can vary quite a bit. Obviously, grass-fed will have more compared to Muscle meat, which is grain fed, generally speaking, um, grass will give a better a better taurine content. Um, uncooked lamb um, meat is really high, you know, similar to the fish. Um, cooked lamb muscle is one hundred and seventy one, which is still much higher than beef. You'll get much more lamb. It sort of explains that, like in Iceland. The inland parts, there's a high level of consumption of lamb. Probably helps them in that regard. I'm making the claim that taurine helps improve um, your own internal heat. So it warms you up. This is why certain um, the Inuit. Um, consume. Remember chick um chicken. Remember birds is their second highest. Chickens and all the bird family, pretty much. Bar if you consider, you know, like the the leg parts, but the breasts and other parts in general, chicken is much higher than, and and not only chicken, but all birds are much higher than um ruminant animals, and that's why seafood tends to be the highest. Then it's um, the birds, and then it's everything else after that. And so a population that wants to get more taurine in its diet, obviously is going to prioritise seafood and um, birds as the secondary part. Okay, so we've looked at that. They can go away. We've looked at the that, and that was the actual what I was talking about with the breast milk, about 900 mils. So per 100 mil, nine times. So you get about 160. You do all the divisions and all that, you'll you'll come up. We'll do it quickly. Just so people don't say that I'm making things up. Anyway, three divided by 70, which is the average which we're talking about. And what did we say? Nine times 20 odd. It's actually slightly higher in, in human breast milk, but I just can't remember exactly how much it is. And you divide that. By like that, and it's actually higher. I thought it was actually lower actually four point equivalent to somebody with an average height of 70 kilos, it's 4.2. So BB gets quite a bit. As I said, it's not an issue for people to take every meal, two grams of taurine supplemental, not an issue whatsoever. Um, as long as they're not taking things like lithium, blood pressure meds and stuff like that, they need to be adjusted and be, need to be monitored by a doctor. This is not a medical advice. Just keep that in mind. I have created a video to provide that information. People should always check that out before using taurine supplementation. Now, let's get back into the juicy, juicy stuff.
there is a there is a study happening at the moment looking at brown adipose tissue and white adipose tissue and and also in elderly women with sarcopenia that will finish this year in september so i'm keeping an eye on it waiting for it to, because primarily we've only got animal studies which is quite annoying to say the least taurine's been we've known about taurine for a very very long time why the hell we can't do in, um, human studies is beyond me but anyway at least we've got one going so we'll see how that plays out now and that's looking at the adipose tissue it's exactly the stuff that I want to look at. So let's get into it. Taurine stimulates thermoregulatory genes in brown fat tissue and muscles without the influence of white adipose tissue or stomach white adipose tissue. In a high fat diet induced obese mouse model, when they say high fat, what they mean is Randall cycle. That means sugar and fat in large amounts. That's what the, the high fat diet model is really, the chow. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we're talking about Randall cycle here, eating a lot of, like, you know, like Western diet, a lot of fats, a lot of processed fats, and a lot of processed carbohydrates. So that's what we're talking about. So... We'll go past the genes. We're not going to bother with the genes, the rat genes anyway. Anyway, body weight, normal. That's on the normal chow, um, which the mice consume. As you can see, you add taurine, the body weight remains more or less the same. So um, fat mass doesn't go up, up by much. The fluids pretty much remain the same, and the lean mass actually um, is as good as the normal, the control. So, and look, I've talked about before, taurine increases um, like the Krebs cycle by 30% efficiency, and it actually prevents the overproduction of lactate. This is what protects, you know, has a like a protective effect on the muscles as well. So bodybuilders to reduce lactate levels, taking taurine can actually reduce oxidative stress and stuff like that in the muscle fibers, providing you the ability to actually train for longer and stuff like that with less damage to the muscle. Um, so it has those protective effects. That's a side issue. So that's what's happening in these little buggers. And then when we look at the, like, three tissues in general terms but now let's take a look at that's bat as you can see bat is going up up the expression of these genes is going up 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 in that regard in the stomach um white fat as you can see only, only in the high fat, which is Randall cycle. That's what we're talking about. The Randall cycle induced diet. Again, up, up. And you can see, and that's uncoupling of uncoupling in the actual white tissue is much lower, obviously, because you're producing less. And in the bat, it's much higher, which is what we want. And pretty much, even in the muscles, it's slightly more in terms of uncoupling. So, anyway, so that's that. And these are like sort of growth factors and stuff like that, as you can see usually very similar to the normal range again so and we do want that to be slightly higher in the brown in 
the muscles. So we can see so when you eat more, that helps the with these growth pathways in the muscle. With the tor with the taurine actually enhances it. So eating more does play a role. So that's why that seems a bit strange. It's not strange. It's you know that's what we want um, in the muscle. So we don't really care about the muscle in this regard. We're more concerned about what's happening here in the brown adipose tissue and the white adipose tissue, uh, which is the fat around your stomach. That's what IWI wet means. So that's pretty much that. So here again, another one, brown looking, the study Tory mediating um, uh, browning of white adipose tissue is involved in, in its anti-obesity effects in mice. I'm not really concerned about that. I'm more concerned about that it's actually beiging the actual white tissue and it's upregulating the activity of the brown fat. And that's really important. What does brown fat do? It actually increases heat, internal temperature. It, you know, it, you want to warm your, yourself up, you need to basically have more brown adipose tissue. You guys are well aware of it. Most of my subscribers that have heard this from the old keto days, people talking about brown adipose and white adipose tissue. Pretty much the key ingredient is the taurine. This is why populations like the Inuit prioritize it. Foods that are high in taurine. Through trial and error, they've worked out eating fish, and eating birds will give them more of something which actually keeps them warmer. They don't know exactly what it is. They just know it keeps them warmer. And so they will consume those foods. Because people have always wondered, why do the Inuit consume so much fish? And it actually ends up giving them a problem where they, they're consuming too many omega-3s. And as a consequence, they're, you know it affects their clotting factors. And so they're, you know, they tend to have difficulty if they get cut or whatever to, to um, you know, they actually have to use some medicinal stuff and things that they stick on to, to prevent, you know, too much bleeding and allowing to, to heal. But those are the reasons that they're consuming foods that can actually provide them with greater warmth, especially in those very, very cold nights, um, wintry nights um, uh, close to the Arctic Circle. So, again, as you can see, within the white, it's down, down, which is what we want. And again, we see again in this study, in the treatment group, body weight comes down. Um, I've, that's not the focus of this video anyway. Uh, fat mass down, lean mass goes up. That's probably also the myostatin effect, um, that lowering myostatin that um, taurine has. So, yeah, it's um, another mechanism that I don't know whether these people are talking about. Um, I, ha I didn't see anywhere in this study as I sort of skimped through it really quickly. I couldn't see any reference to myostatin, so. And heat. Increasing energy expenditure. Adaptive thermogenesis. You can see an increase both in the light cycle, which is, means daytime, um, and in the dark cycle. So, and when we're looking at it, respiratory exchange rates, very similar. So it's just the uncoupling effect of the brown adipose tissue, where really the temperature is sort of coming from, you know. Rectal temperature, they suck a probe up its rear end to get a measurement. Ted would have loved loved to be 
involved in something like that. But anyway, he's a devious little thing. Anyway, relatively mRNA expression. As you can see, the bat, it's way up, which is great. And even in the different white tissue, we see the sort of beijing effect. So if you want to sort of beige, let me make one thing clear to people. Taurine may work much better in a rat model. But if you're doing, if you're engaging the Randall cycle heavily, don't expect taurine to be a weight loss um, uh, mechanism. It doesn't work. Okay. So, and, and rats actually have a much higher metabolic rate because they live less years than us. And so tend to basically, within a very much shorter period of time, show these amplified expressions. We don't. So get that out of your head. Um, for us, it's not really a, a weight loss thing. But it, it has advantages in increasing, in particular in humans, increasing brown adipose tissue and slightly beijing um, uh, the actual white um, tissue. So that will help increase um, uh, the internal temperature. And a number of my friends that have basically, I've encouraged, and some of my subscribers have also probably noticed that they feel warmer the more taurine they take. And I've got, and most of the people that I've got um, on taurine and actually feel warmer are not even carnivores. These are people on a sad diet, on a mixed diet, on a standard diet, people who are friends or relatives that are not doing the carnival diet. So nobody can say, oh, well, Harry, you know, those people are eating more animal foods. That's why they're, they're warmer. Well, you know, no, <laughs> that's not the case. <laughs> they're actually consuming more taurine. And before they had, um, you know, they were snuggling up like mad. And now they're not snuggling up. Um and they, they can walk around with less clothing, even in winter, and they are quite shocked. And I've had a number of women that have thanked me and said, thank you, Harry, um, for keeping me warm in the winter. So let that be a lesson to you. Anyway, Sue. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, and as you can see, even this study, again, is showing, and so the first one, just to let you know, the study here, any basic obesity effects of taurine through inhibition of uh, lipogenesis of in white tissue, but not in brown tissue, in a high fat diet induced obese mouse model. They love these mouse models. We're um, feeding them a, a Randall cycle thing. Again. You can see the differences. body weight so obviously there's the control and it's much closer to the control again fat mass yeah fluids very similar lean mass much better than the randall cycle animal that's the general stuff Oops. And these are sort of energy expenditures again. Day, night. As you can see, the, the one with the taurine shows much better. So this is drinking food intake. 
counts the activities. And this other one again, the effects of taurine supplementation on obesity and browning of white head post tissue in high fat diet fed mice. Unfortunately, that's all we've got. So as you can see, a number of studies are showing the same. So the same effects. Now we're just going quickly through these. So there's a whole lot of references on this. And again, there's your control, control plus taurine actually goes even better. I left this for last specifically to show you. So here's the, obviously there's the, the one with the high fat, which is the Randall cycle type mouse. There's a Randall cycle plus T, a much better improvement in body weight. So this is what I've been saying for some time because, you know, Using this, if you've got elderly um, people that are not going to change their lifestyle and all that, adding taurine to their diet it will improve their health. And obviously, even yourself as a biohacker, it adding, you know, as being on a low carbohydrate diet and adding a bit of taurine in it will improve a lot of other markers. So, but in terms of These are the different gene expressions. And that was about it. The take home, the take home message, let me just stop sharing. The take home message is guys, that what taurine does is, has the ability of, you could say, amplifying the uncoupling effect of the brown adipose tissue. So uncoupling mitochondria is when the AT, ATPAs, the you know the nanomotor doesn't produce ATP, but basically just radiates, just wastes, um, uh, you know, pretty much energy in a sense to just produce heat. It just dissipates a whole lot of heat. That's what uncoupling does, and that's what taurine does. Encourage the increase of that uncoupling effect within the brown adipose tissue. So it's like oxidizing away and turning it into heat rather than actually using that energy. So yes, it has some level of fat loss, but it's not like massive. So that, this is not a, a weight loss thing, but it, it will help improve your, make you warmer. It explains why a carnivore diet actually makes people feel warmer compared to a diet, um, you know, a sad diet or many other diets. Why we as carnivores, we, we feel warmer. It's because we're basically increasing our brown adipose tissue and we're also beiging slightly our white fat, which means that that also starts producing some, some sort of um, heating. Obviously, how much will, depend, will vary. It's a bell curve, will vary between people, you know, genetics, a lot of factors. You know, some people have more brown adipose tissue, others have less, and that's genetically based. Can't help you if you're at the lower end. If you're at the higher end, you'll really know that it actually, um, you know, you'll really get the, the absolute um, highest benefit. If you're in the middle order, like the rest of us, the majority of us, you'll feel warmer. You'll wear less clothing. I mean, we're in winter now, in the early early parts of, uh, well, we're nearly in winter, to be more precise, in the latter part, the last month of autumn. And there's a lot of people here that wear jackets. I go to work and come from work in the evening and I'm wearing basically, um, you know, a shirt still. And it seems weird to other people, you know, Harry, how do you, you know, most people at work know, they go, how do you bloody get around? Because I have a couple of grams of taurine. 
that keeps you warm. And it's really nice um, that you don't have to wear so much clothing. I actually sweat. That's the other thing. Even Hello Kitty, she complains how much she sweats um, consuming the taurine. I keep on reminding about all the benefits of the biohacking about, you know, um, you know, the sort of the enhancing synolytics, enhancing um, melatonin in the evening and all the other benefits that you get uh, from taurine. Um, and so, you know, more new brain cells and all sorts of other things. But the thing is, she realises as well that she doesn't have to wear as much clothing in the winter. Um, my brother's partner, she loves taurine. She's on a mixed diet. And she was always cold, always, you know, heaps of clothing on. Now, she just gets around with far less clothing. Sometimes she feels, I feel warm, too, too hot. <laughs> she takes clothes off. Once she gets going and, and walks, um, and that's when you really notice it. Uh, if you're sitting around, it, you don't notice it as much. But the moment you start moving, so there is some sort of connection there, you know, with movement and all that, you seem to generate far more internal heat compared to on a traditional low-carb diet or any diet um, before supplementing taurine. So once you supplement it, it really has actually increased the tolerance of cold for me and many other people that have used it. And I suspect a lot of a number of my subscribers have had similar experience, but up until now, they probably didn't know what was actually causing it, what was actually making them, you know, a bit more comfortable in the cold. So that's about it. You know, I just wanted to um, give people a night, a re you know, a bit of a deeper understanding of what is happening with brown adipose tissue amongst carnivores and why carnivore, the carnivore diet, actually makes you warmer. Obviously, depending on the type of carnivore foods one consumes, that will amplify to different degrees, to varying degrees. So it's the intake. Well, others may just want to do beef and then go, hmm, or supplement why eat more fish? Because some people may not like fish. So I'll use the they'll use the supplemental approach to basically get that additional taurine to warm themselves up. I don't care. That's that's your business, the way you go about doing that. Um but you know, it's it's an option. And I, and sometimes we have elderly in, in in our families that have got issues, you know, feeling cold and stuff like that. The sarcopenia side, you know, lowering myostatin to help them, you know, try and maintain some muscle skeletal, um, uh, you know, levels, things like that. So it's it's got other uses as well. But one of the one of the things that I like about it is it keeps me warm. I tend to consume a bit more supplemental taurine in winter for that reason, just to keep myself warmer. Anyway, that's about it. See yous.